If you are building a golf simulator, you already know that the setup can be very expensive. I'm sure you have already considered the launch monitor and whether or not you will be investing in a TV or a projector with an impact screen. But one of the things that most people consider last is the hitting mat. And in this video, I hope to convince you that your hitting mat is really important and that you may want to set aside more money for it than you originally thought. There are a lot more things to consider about the hitting mat than what might first come to mind. And in this video, we will go over each one of them. And if you stick around to the end, I will tell you about how I broke my wrist because of my golf mat and why commercial simulators are actually ruining your game and how you can easily fix that in your own simulator setup. The things we will be going over are cost, size and portability, feel, durability, realism and forgiveness, looks and intended use, but not necessarily in that order. Balancing all of those things is no easy task, but by the end of this video, you will have a much better idea of which kind of hitting mat is best for your golf simulator setup based on your budget and priorities. Let's start with cost. It's natural to assume that the more money you spend on something, the better it will be, but that is not necessarily the case with your practice mat. It's easy to get into snake oil territory by spending a lot of money on a premium mat only to end up breaking your wrist like I did. It's important to distinguish between your floor surface and the section of floor where you will be striking the ball. I highly recommend that you treat those two areas separately. If you do, you will be able to build a better looking, better feeling, and more realistic simulator. If you are looking for a budget option, you should start with a small hitting mat like the Millard 3-in-1 Practice Mat or the Go Sports Tri-Turf XL. You can get these for around $40 to $60. If however you are going for a higher end setup, then you can expect to spend around $7 or more per square foot on more premium artificial turf options like the Go Sports Padded Mats or the Real Field Country Elite. Either way, the smartest move is to plan to have a practice mat where you strike the ball and have a separate artificial grass material for the rest of your simulator. Two of the major benefits of this is that you will be able to save more money doing this long term because you can easily replace the small hitting mats over time as they were. The second reason is that your walking and putting surface has a very different purpose than your striking surface. And if you have a dedicated hitting mat, you will be able to get much more realistic hitting conditions for better results while having a better putting surface at the same time. Next, you should consider how realistic your hitting mat is. The importance of this depends on how serious you are about improving your skills. If you value getting golf practice that will also translate to better gameplay on the course, having the right golf mat is extremely important. Most of the larger hitting mats on the market don't come anywhere near giving you a realistic simulation of the course. I would even say that most hitting mats increase bad habits and expectations and when you play on the course you will be frustrated and disappointed. The reason for this is that most mats are designed for looks and durability which is great for commercial users but not great for players using the mat. If your mat is unpadded or the padding is too firm then fat shots will lead to all of your striking force being deflected from the ground and going back into your wrist. This can lead to wrist injury and much less realistic striking conditions. Another major downside to hard mats is that they don't allow much downward movement which will severely limit the use of wedges. Wedges are designed to scoop the ball so a hard hitting mat will directly oppose your intention to get under the ball. When using a wedge on these kinds of mats you will have the tendency to have the club bounce off the mat behind the ball which then makes makes the club face and your swing path to change direction which leads to many thin shots and the ball to go in a very different direction than you intended. I've tried many different kinds of mats and I was surprised to find that the one I'm the most happy with is one of the least expensive options. The more expensive options look a lot better and last much longer but they feel nothing like golf on a course does. The pads that allow the best downward movement and feel the most real are Miller 3-in-1 practice mat or the Go Sports Tri-Turf XL. If you don't care as much about the realism, then you may be better off with the more expensive commercial mats like the Go Sports padded mats or the Real Field Country Elite that will make your simulator look more professional and higher end, but these don't allow much downward movement and don't feel anything like coarse. By the way, all the products I mentioned in this video are in a link in the description below. Another thing you should consider is whether or not it's important that you can use real tees with the hitting mat because most mats aren't designed to allow real tees. If this is an important factor, then I recommend the Real Field Country Elite or similar hitting mats. I personally think that the artificial tees are far superior to real tees because they are a lot more convenient over having to set a tee after each drive. Artificial tees are adjustable, less expensive long term, and they save you from having to clean up a pile of tees in your simulator after your practice session. The artificial tees that work best are ones like the Fiberbilt adjustable tees. 
Next is portability. This one is easy to decide on for most people. If it's important for you that your simulator flooring can be easily stored away, then your options are going to be easy to decide on. Likely the best option for you will be the sections of larger hitting mats like the Go Sports padded mats that can easily be folded or stacked away at your convenience. If you go this route, you may want to consider either cutting out a section of the mat to fit a smaller replaceable mat inside it, or just buy one larger mat that has various services built into it like the Go Sports Pro mat, though these are more expensive to replace in the long term for obvious reasons. This will also give you more realistic striking conditions over the padded mats. If however your space is dedicated for your golf simulator and you aren't worried about having to move your floor surface then you have more options available. The less expensive option is to purchase putting green sheets to cover the floor surface which would cost you around $3 per square foot then buy a dedicated replaceable heating mat for striking. The downside of doing this is that the better hitting mats are quite thick so if you use a cheaper putting green next to your hitting mat you won't have a level potting surface. One way around this is to add a filler pad under the putting green that also ranges around $3 per square foot that will make your hitting mat level with the putting surface. One of the benefits of having a permanent floor covering is that you can make it look a lot more comfortable and appealing which is great for higher end setups. I hope this video was in some way helpful and entertaining to you. If it was, I would appreciate it if you can let me know in the comments what things were the most or least helpful so I can make more content like this that is to your liking. That's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and being a supporter of the channel. If you like this content, it would really mean a lot if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because I have tons more videos like this to make and your support means the world to me. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. By the way, setting up your own simulator can be a daunting task. I created this channel to help people save a lot of time and money by doing it themselves, and I hope that my videos have been helpful to you. If you still feel like you could use a little guidance to make the perfect setup, I would be happy to help you with that. Feel free to send me an email which you can find in the description, and we can discuss the best approach for your situation.